So let's talk about putting the video system onto the video pod. Now I'd like the video pod to run totally separate from the power system on the plane itself so that when I remove the video pod the video will still be working. Now to do that I'm going to have to have first of all its own power source on the pod so I'm going to be having a separate video battery and the second thing is the Minim OSD is going to have to have power separate from the Arju pilot. Normally the Arju pilot supplies uh, 5 volts right here onto this plug to power the uh, Minim OSD, at least one stage of it. I've got the two jumpers soldered so both stages would normally be powered from this plug. To uh, get around that I'm going to supply 5 volts to this from this uh, UBEC right here. So the UBEC is getting power from the same battery and then supplying 5 volts to the minimum OSD so it continues to operate even when it's not connected to the Arju pilot on the plane. So it, you can see over here on the screen that the minimum OSD is operating, the video is operating, but of course there's no data coming from the plane so you won't see any of the telemetry data there but you will see the minimum OSD logo right there but at least the video will still be working so to get data from the plane over here I'm gonna to have to connect to this cable and I'm gonna be connecting a ground and the data cable for the uh, telemetry data to give a little bit of DC separation, I've, I've uh, soldered on a 3.3 microfarad capacitor on the end of the data line. So that'll be between this and the Arju pilot, so no DC can get through. And then I'll also have a ground wire. Okay, so the Arju pilot is now running, and I'm feeding the telemetry data to the OSD through just two wires. I've got the data wire here, the yellow wire. The red wire for the 5 volts isn't connected. I've got a green wire going to the ground wire feeding down here to the minimum OSD. And now I've got the display on the screen showing the telemetry data. Now if I was to lose connection to the Arju pilot, say I remove the pod from the uh, plane, so I lost these connections, then it would look like this. The minimum OSD is saying, well, basically it doesn't have any data coming in. But the video is still there, so the pod would keep continue to work even though it was removed from the plane. So next is to mount the uh, video transmitter, the camera, with the pan tilt, the battery, and of course the minimum OSD and the UBIC onto the pod and see how it all looks. Here's an exploded view of the video transmitter and all the pieces that were in the box. They actually had the transmitter inside the box with the display showing out through the hole and then they had all of these metal pieces stacked up underneath it to act as a heat sink to transfer heat from the bottom of the transmitter to this case. And then they had all these screws to hold the, the two cover plates on. Now what I'm doing is taking all that away and we're making our own heat sink as recommended by the viewers. So here is John cutting two pieces of this scrap aluminum to uh, make us a heat sink underneath. Here's one of the aluminum pieces that John just made and the radio Oh, that's interesting. Well, the cover just came off. <laughs> but anyway, the radio is going to sit right there, and, but there'll be another bracket on the other side that this will fit on top of, so I'll have a fin on both sides. I've also transferred the labels off this case here onto this case, so I still maintain my frequency tags and my milliwatt tag. So here's the finished product with the two pieces of aluminum angle iron 
and we got slots for the tie wraps to go through and a hole for the plug to go in to the video transmitter and it's all going to tie wrap right here where these grooves are in the video pod and there's John the manufacturer of the new heat sink <laughs> So we have some old IBM heat sink compound and John went ahead and put heat sink compound on these two plates. So now we're going to put the two plates like this and then put the radio on top of that, the transmitter on top of that, and then we're going to tie wrap it to the pod. Okay, John's going to tie wrap it on. These are so much longer. I don't think we're going to need an extra pair of hands. He says no extra pair of hands needed. This is easy. <laughs> so I put a little welder's glue down at the bottom here to keep it from sliding. And uh, that ought to hold it pretty good. We'll just let that dry and I think we've got it mounted. I found out the welder's glue was just not available at any of the hardware stores in my area. I tried Lowe's, Home Depot, True Value. None of them have it anymore but you can get it at homax.com on the internet so that's about the only way I can get it now so here's the completed video pod and I'll just uh, do a walkthrough on everything that's on here so what I have starting out is I have the uh, pan tilt mounted on here with four servo screws and the camera is mounted onto that and I've got some rubber bands on here to hold the camera so I can quickly take it off if I want to, if I need to uh, connect a menu board and program it or anything, I can get it off there quick or even change cameras. And this is the uh, transmitter that we previously showed and the wires are coming out of that and going underneath here. Now right in this area is the microphone. I decided to run the wire there and just to give you an idea on that underneath here let me go around this way underneath here I have the uh, battery mounted right here with some velcro and right here is the wiring harness that came with the uh, transmitter and so I decided to mount that right here and the uh, mic wires or microphone wires come out right there and this also distributes the power of the 12 volts to everything so that's right there and then like I said I got the battery just conveniently velcroed on the bottom now in the back here is the minimum OSD and I have that velcroed to the base of this pod right there and I can unplug this wire if I need to program it if I need to put the FTDI adapter on here so I can connect it to the USB port on the computer and program it. I can just pull this plug off and go ahead and program it. And this is being provided 5 volts from the UBIC which I showed earlier and that's mounted on the side right in here. I've got that Velcro to the side. Not everything is Velcro though. Like I said the wiring harness has a tie wrap right here. So that won't come loose and uh, so that's pretty much all the pieces on it now let's just go ahead and give it a test oh here's my cable that I made up to go to the uh, APM and of course the capacitor that I showed you earlier is inside this it has three wires here but the uh, red wire is not being used there's no voltage it's just signal and ground so let's go ahead and plug in the receiver and it's on channel D which is actually 1258 now before I turn on the pod connect the battery for the pod I'm going to connect the wire to the APM on the Skywalker so that's done alright now let's uh, go ahead and plug in the battery on the pod right here okay so that's on now I'm going to set the uh, let's see if I can say, 
Let's set the pod to channel D, or the transmitter to channel D. There it is. Okay, so that's now operating. So if we go over here and look at the screen, you can see the picture right here. But the uh, minimum OSD isn't receiving any signal because we haven't turned on the Arju Pilot yet. Okay, now plugging in the plane. This is plugging in the flight battery, which is the only battery I have on the plane. The other battery is on the pod. You can see we have the data from the minimum OSD running now. Okay, the interesting thing about this pod is that we can actually disconnect it from the plane totally. And of course, when we do that, we lose the minimum OSD data. But you can see now the pod is still operating. Look around here, you can see the camera crew. Hi, John. And you can see me. Ah, oh, hi there. And now we can... Uh, go outside with it. John's going to monitor the screen. And I'm headed on out. You won't be able to hear me though. See the picture's probably changing colors as I go from black and white to color. And we're back. Okay, so that this is what it looks like when it's on the plane. And there's a screw that goes in here to hold it down. And uh, the next thing we'll be doing is I just need to hook up these pan tilt wires to the receiver. But the power will be coming from the UBIC inside the plane. The UBIC, I mean. Uh, which will give me the ground and the voltage and the white wire will go to the receiver to control the uh, servos for the pan tilt. Just to recap what I did here with the video pod I want to show you this schematic that I revamped from the wiki from the Arduplane wiki and uh, I want to go over this with you so here is the minimum OSD right here and First note on that is I soldered the two jumpers that was on the minimum OSD and that lets the 5 volts come through to the second stage so the whole thing's powered off the 5 volts. Now that means the 12 volts over here can't be connected. So that's the first caveat. Now for the wiring. I'm using a 3S LiPo video battery and the 12 volts from that is feeding over here to the camera to the microphone which was optional does not feed the minimum OSD as you can see but it does feed the video transmitter so that's where the 12 volts goes it also goes down here to my 5 volt UBIC so the 12 volts goes into the 5 volt UBIC and 5 volts comes out comes back around and feeds the 5 volts to the minimum OSD so there is no 5 volts coming from the APM. This is the APM over here, the Arju Pilot. So no 5 volts coming from the Arju Pilot to the minimum OSD. It's coming from this UBEC. In addition to that, I have two wires coming from the APM. One is the output, in other words, the telemetry output, which goes through a 3.3 microfarad capacitor to the RX or the input of the minimum OSD. And then I also have ground coming from the Arju Pilot to the minimum OSD. Now these two pins here I found were actually connected on the board on the minimum OSD. So the black and the ground are actually the same thing. 
So I use the ground here for this pin. So the, the APM is feeding ground here, but I'm also getting a ground from the UBEC on the pin next to it. They're actually the same connection, but it just makes it convenient for the plug to use separate pins there. So that's the way I did it. So the TX is not connected because the minimum OSD is not going to be transmitting anything back to the Arju pilot. So that wire isn't even connected, and neither is this one. So there's your four wires that do have a connection. So two wires from the UBEC, two wires from the APM, and that does it. Like I said, the mic was optional. Your transmitter may not have audio, or it may have stereo audio or monaural audio. Mine has a monaural audio, so just one audio wire to the mic, and then 12 volts in ground to the mic. And I got that mic from uh, Range Video. I think it was about $10. It's an amplified microphone. Okay, so that's about it. If you have any questions, you can just put them as a comment under the video. Give me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you next time on the tube. I'll give you another view of this schematic as we're leaving, so you can get a look at it.